Now, if you are looking for a review that is just going to bash this book and bash Nesta and bash Sarah J Mass, you are on the wrong channel. Hello and welcome to a new video. Today I will be reviewing A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass. I don't do a lot of single reviews of books on my channel. It's never something I've done a lot of, but I just have so much to say and I want this to be a place where I can talk about spoilers so it's separate from my reading vlog, which I usually keep those spoiler free. So if you have not read A Court of Silver Flames, don't watch this video, don't watch this until you've read the book and know everything about it because I will be spoiling things. Now, while I am sitting down and doing a review solely of this book, I wouldn't say my thoughts are actually organized. I don't do a lot of reviews for this reason. I don't tend to think in a very linear fashion when it comes to this and I didn't like write out a review or anything, but I did take some notes about the points that I wanted to hit of basically why I love this book so much. So let's go ahead and get started and I'm going to give you basically 101 reasons why Nesta is the best character ever. Now if you are looking for a review that is just going to bash this book and bash Nesta and bash Sarah J Mass, you are on the wrong channel. I know there are a lot of channels that find it so much fun to just bash books, especially Sarah J Maas and the characters she writes, but I am not one of those people. One, I don't ever really like to spend my time just bashing characters or bashing authors. I'm just, you know, I like this to be a much more positive space. And so if you're looking for one of those really annoying videos that just like hate reads these books and then like complains about them you're in the wrong place. But if you are someone who appreciates Nesta's emotional journey and really likes this story and thinks Sarah J Maas is a really fun fantasy writer, you're in the right place. So let's get started. First off, like I said, Nesta's emotional journey I think is really the backbone of this story. It is just so incredible to watch her go from who she is in the beginning to who she is at the end because it is so dramatically different. So you see her in the beginning and you see this at the end of A Court of Frost and Starlight. She is, for lack of a better word, broken. She has had a terrible time. Like she has gone from one trauma to another. If you, one, consider her human life, she had a terrible, like, conniving type of mother who just wanted to climb the ladder and get her married to the richest prince possible. And then mother dies, and then we've got the father who loses his entire fortune and then basically becomes useless. And I, like, there's parts of the father's story I like, but most of it I don't like. He's not, like, I get that he had his own trauma, but, like, he couldn't even take care of his children. Um, and then, so Nesta really turns a lot of that hatred she has for the world, and she turns it in on herself, which unfortunately is a way a lot of people think, sometimes including myself. So I really understand that part of her human journey. And then, you know, she pushes at her sisters and she fights with them and she's stuck in this cottage that, you know, they all share a room and she feels like life has just dealt her the worst hand. And then her sister gets kidnapped by a fairy and that's that. And, you know, they do regain some of that wealth back for a second just because Tamlin gave it to them. And then she's pushed into the cauldron, which is the ultimate, like, trauma to her. She is something like hers is taken from her. It is something only meant for her. It is her humanity. It is her soul and she feels that it has been ripped from her without her choice and she takes you know a little something back from the cauldron. She fights back but it doesn't change her situation once she's awake and it's a lot of trauma and then we before she even has like five seconds to process all of that, we're thrown into the war and she has to try and save her sister, Elaine. She has to try and save Feyre. She has to watch Feyre painfully go through Reese's temporary death in a court of war and ruin. And then, you know, her dad's head gets cut off and it's all bad. And then she kills the King of Highburn, da da da. Everything is terrible. And so she comes home and everyone just like returns to this life of normalcy and they are all happy and she's like 
what are you guys happy about? Like, what has happened to be happy about? And I really get where she's coming from, and it's really sad to see her in the beginning, to see her try and try to cope, and she just can't. She's, she's just stuck. And I have seen a lot of criticism of how the inner circle handles Nesta, and like, I... I partly, partly I get it. Most of it, I think, are people just like to complain about Sarah J. Mass books, like I've said, and I will say it again, people just like to be mean. But she, you know, is approached by the inner circle and they give her two options. And they say, either you're cut off from us completely, or, you know, you can go up and train with Cassian, because we think physically, mentally, emotionally, that's what would be best for you, and you obviously can't handle these decisions on your own anymore. And I think that was good for her, and I I know that at least Feyre did this, and Cass did this out of love for Nesta. Reese, he's a little iffy sometimes, but he has his reasons to not like Nesta. Um, so that's where we start, and then to compare to the Nesta at the end of the story is just absolutely phenomenal. The physical changes she goes through training with Cassian is one of my, was one of my favorite parts to read about, which I found unexpected. Like, I didn't think I'd really care about the training aspect. I've never read a story where there was a lot of physical training that I cared about. I guess maybe Throne of Glass, too, kind of has that aspect, but it's always been, like, magical training, and, like, this was very much just her physical strength. She had to learn to let herself eat again. She had to learn to, like, treat her body better and to do basic things with the running and the and the working out and all of that, and I just thought it was such a cool journey to read. From that, we get a very different Nesta in the end, because through her physical journey, she gets to explore her emotional journey as well. And the other side of that coin is her journey with Cassian, which I think her experience with him does play an important role in obviously her experience in discovering herself. And I love them so much. I love them so much. I literally cannot explain to you. Like, I love Feyre and Reese. Like, I didn't think anything could top Feyre and Reese. And I'm sitting here like, I think I like Nesta and Cassian even better. Like, this is really saying something. And I, I, like, the way that they work together is so incredible because she helps him and he helps her and they just fit so perfectly together. But they're not instant love either. They still, they bicker and they fight and they clash heads and in a little bit different of a way than Reese and Feyre because they, like, as soon as their mating bond was solidified, they were just like, perfect. And like, yeah, they bicker sometimes, but they understand each other on such a fundamental level. Whereas Nesta and Cassian really had to work to get to that point. And man, was it incredible to read. I loved watching their relationship develop and getting more serious. And like, they went from hating each other, but having to acknowledge that there was some connection there. And then to go from like friends, and then like friends with benefits and letting that slide into something real. Literally, it blew my mind. I love them so much. And it, in the way Sarah J Mass wrote it, it flowed so perfectly. I can barely even like articulate how beautiful that I think it was written because it is just incredible. Along with Cassian and Nesta's relationship, one of my favorite things about this book is the choice Sarah J Mass made to segue into adult fantasy, adult romance, whatever you want to classify it as. I think that was the right decision and I and I would honestly say the first four could really be considered adult too. Like I don't think there's anything that really pushes them into the YA section because she's always been a graphic writer when it comes to sex scenes. It's always had dark content when it comes to the immense amount of trauma all these characters have experienced. Like you can't tell me the under the mountain scenes are not like dark content that would be more appropriate for an older audience. Like, 
16 plus, you know? And so this was just that extra step and I think it was very much the right decision for this series and I love it because I've been getting super into romance the last year and like I'm living in that genre. It is my new favorite genre and I think that this making its way sort of into that adult fantasy romance, more fantasy, but genre like was literally the perfect decision for this series. A big, another big part of Nesta's emotional journey in this book was her forming friendships with someone that wasn't her sisters or wasn't someone in the inner circle because everything in her fae life so far has been tied to these people and she feels no real connection with them as of yet. And so her getting to meet Gwen and and her getting to meet Emery, her getting to form that female friendship and like them becoming warriors together and them all having similar traumatic pasts and being able to connect with each other through that was just so beautiful. I, like I was saying, I think the friendships that she created in this book were just so important and I can't wait to see where her and like the Valkyries idea goes in the coming um, books because it's just such a beautiful aspect of the story. Let's talk a couple favorite scenes, especially, um, let's, let's start with the sad scenes. Let's just make it fun, right? So the two, I think just two of them, the three, the three biggest scenes that stood out to me are all really, they're the big emotional moments for Nesta. They're not the big fight scenes. They're not the like crazy, although the scene with Nesta versus the Kelpie is one that I have written down. Is that what the monster was called? I think so. It doesn't matter. Um, that scene was pretty intense and was pretty badass when she used the crown like Nesta girl. It was awesome. That was is one of my notes that I wanted to talk about that. But really the big three scenes that stood out to me was first Nesta's um, had a nightmare and she started to use her magic within her dream and it was and she was just screaming and you saw Azriel, Cassian, and Reese all have to come into the room and the only person who could pull her back and get her to stop using the magic so intensely was Cassian and that was just so like such a good scene and the fact that she it was it spurred from her having to scry and like having to face that trauma again it was just so intense and I loved that scene so much because it was one of those very first like little seeds of Nesta and Cassian in this part of the story. Next, one of the other scenes that I just really adored was was Nesta's breakdown when they were on the hike. Like in because it's just something I could so imagine myself doing. Do I see myself going on to a random mountain and hiking for 5 days and like to get my through my emotional trauma? I don't know, but like the way it was written and in the acknowledgement Sarah J Maas kind of talked about how this was inspired by her own story and when she was in the mountains of New Zealand I think um like just that like it's like she finally let go of the breath and look I know people make fun of the sentence let go of the breath she didn't know she was holding but that is exactly what it feels like and that is what it felt like to Nesta in that moment it's like she could finally breathe again and she was crying and she was breaking down but it's like she finally let go and it was just such an incredible moment and to have have to let go of that guilt she felt for herself and for her actions and that hatred she had for the world and that hatred she had for herself and finally embrace a future where someone else could love her and she could have friends and she could have family and she could have a future and and she felt she had that realization she said I don't like I don't want to die I don't want to stop living I don't want to push everyone away like I have that was just such a beautiful beautiful scene I literally cannot get over it and I just like I don't know how anyone could read that scene alone in this book and criticize Sarah's writing or her storytelling because that literally it felt like it 
reached in and like touched my soul. It was such a beautiful scene and I just so much connected with Nesta and her experience and it was just incredible. The third like WTF moment type of scene was Feyre's birth. Now the little bits of Feyre's story we got to see in this were really cool. I do wish that Feyre's pregnancy I wish we got the chance to see that from her point of view more. While Nesta is like my new favorite point of view because she's my favorite character, this is a story I wish I'd gotten to see from Feyre's point of view. But that being said, this scene I really liked seeing from Nesta's point of view. So the whole problem that they had been having is they weren't sure how Feyre was going to give birth to a baby with Illyrian wings and I was that like medical part of me I was like we really can't figure out a c-section guys like you are literally all magical beings you can't figure it out like cauterize the wound and she won't bleed to death but it's fine it's fine it's whatever um but I really really liked this scene because of the role Nesta played in it when it was obvious that like it looked like she Feyre was going to die, it looked like the baby was going to die, and Nesta already had all that guilt from being the one to tell Feyre about this, like the Illyrian wing thing and how it could probably kill her. Like she, one, had to let go of that guilt, and you know, Feyre had already said like, I forgive you, but um, it was just so like visual in my head, this scene, the way it's described in the book. I could see it, I could feel it and like the, the tension it created was just so incredible. So Feyre is dying, she just lets it all go and she just like asks the the magic, the universe, the cauldron, whoever, she says I'll do anything, I'll give it all back, you can take the magic back, you can take the death whatever back, it's whatever, I'll, I will give anything, just save Feyre and save the baby. And that's what happens. And I really like the fact that it's kind of hinted at that the mother is who kind of gave her this extra, like, power to do this. And it was just such an incredible story. And like when I was reading it, because I read the last like 200 pages in one sitting, I, there was just tears, tears streaming down my face. It was so good. So that was probably one of my favorite scenes now in the whole series because it was just so incredible. Now for one of my favorite scenes that is a little less depressing. It's a pretty small moment and I don't know why it just means so much to me, but at the Winter Stol Solstice gathering, um, Az shows Nesta that he got her a present and he got her a reading light, essentially. It's like, I, I don't know if it like was one that actually clipped to a book or whatever, but it was a reading light and she just is like she just bursts with happiness and she like throws her arms around him and gives him a hug and it literally was just the sweetest moment and I liked that it was with some with like a member of the inner circle that wasn't Cass or wasn't Amarin like it was someone that she doesn't normally really interact with and it was just so sweet and I loved it so much because I love Nesta's love for romance novels and reading I think it is such a cool detail that you see this kind of really hard, serious character and she reads romance novels. And then like her and Emery and Gwen are like in a romance novel book club. I'm living for it. Like I love it so much. And then one of my other favorite characters in this book is the house because it is revealed towards the end that Nesta like kind of created the personality of the house because with her magic it kind of was done unconsciously and it's because she just needed a friend and the house became her friend. I want a magic house with a personality. Is that so much to ask? A discovery of witches has it. Nesta has one now. Like I want a house with a personality that will give me romance novels at its recommendation. How, is, how, how do I get that? I loved it so much and it would like give them cakes and then like run her bath for her and it would like produce a plate of flu food and it's like you have to eat Nesta and like it's just literally the cutest thing in the world. I loved it so much. One other just sort of cutesy observation that I really liked um, was that Az makes the worst chaperone. Like in the world. I'm not sure why he was put in charge of chaperoning Cass and Nesta because like he was never there 
first of all. And like, I read the bonus chapter about Asriel. Um, I'm not sure what edition it's in. My friend just sent me pictures of the scene. But like, I get why he wasn't there because he just couldn't stand to be around them as mates. And he couldn't stand to be around Feyre and Reese as mates because he's just really in sad town over there but he really was a bad chaperone and like this there were scenes that were so funny like there's one where Nesta and Cassian had been in the dining room things had gone down and like they have to stop and then because Az is coming and she like just kind of brushes it off and leaves and and Az is like I was gonna eat at this dining table guys like what are we doing here it's just so funny and as is constantly giving them shit and I I love it it's hilarious and I can't wait to see where his story does go I don't know I'm assuming he'll get one from his perspective at one point because um, we haven't had many chapters from his perspective and I am so torn I do not know where I want his story to go like part of me likes the idea of Elaine because I kind of like the three sisters, the three brothers, like it would be such a perfect story. But I also am a real sucker for the mate storyline. So like I want, I want Elaine to somehow end up with Lucian. Like I, you can't tell me that their mating bond was a mistake. Like if their mating bond is there, there should be some sort of real relationship there like potential for a relationship but I don't know um so because but then like the moment in the bonus chapter between Elaine and Az is literally the sweetest so I don't know but the bonus chapter does also introduce the possibility of Az and Gwen which would also be a really good storyline because he is the one that rescued her in the first place and brought her to the library so like I don't know. I don't know what I want to happen with him. I'm so torn. I love both options. We'll just see what happens when it happens. At the end of the novel is when we see all of the big battle stuff in this like Hunger Games situation. That was such an insane plot twist and like the way that that battle continued to rage on and the way that the girls had to learn to work together and like it really really just solidified their relationship and solidified them as warriors as Valkyrie and it was just so cool so intense to read but it was really really cool to read and really well written and the final battle where the girls the two of them went up the mountain and Nesta stayed behind and she drew that line in the sand literally I'm getting chills just talking about it Nesta was that last line of defense and she was finally going to be the sacrifice that she never considered being before and she there was just so much power in her character and I loved it and then having to fight Cassian under the mind control man I wanted to like rip my heart out it was so good I loved it I definitely think we have not seen the last of these villains I think that's the whole point um I can't wait to see where that goes in the next books. I have no idea when the next books will be coming out. It might be a hot minute, but I will be here for it. Don't worry. And one of the last things I want to talk about is I kind of already touched on Nesta and Cassian and their relationship, but I didn't talk about the fact that it is weighted. It's not revealed until the very end, their status as mates. And I like... I kind of thought that that was an instantaneous thing that you, like, I know Feyre never realized because she was human first, and but Reese knew from the beginning. So, but it seemed both Cassian and Nesta kind of denied it for a long time. They noticed the relationship, the spark that was there, but they both attributed it to either, you know, physical or romantic attraction. But for a long time, I think they both not denied that that could be a real mating bond and the fact that she is so resistant to even acknowledge it was really really interesting to read because I see where she's coming from she's never been in a position where she is the one that is loved where she is the one that gets to get a happy ending and all of a sudden it was presented to her and she didn't know how to take it and it was just really really interesting to see them both develop and learn to accept that fate 
and when they do finally acknowledge each other as mates and they you know agree to that man it was so good and like it was on top of everything else so like there was a lot going on but I just loved loved that development so much and like I said I have become an absolute sucker for this mate relationship thing. Like, if you have any fantasy romance with, like, the mate thing recommendations, let me know. I will look into them because I, like, there's just something in my brain that is a trope that I will always love, I think, because it is, it's really good. And I can't think of a lot of other examples that I've read it in unless you consider, like, Twilight because they kind of mate for life kind of thing. Um and like the imprinting with the wolves too but like I just love that that there is they have this bond and it's just them and that's that and like there's it's not perfect happy land just because of the mating bond there's still a lot for them to grow and to develop but it is just such a perfect little ending for them this is not the end obviously but I really loved that they finally chose to acknowledge that and like really let themselves be in it. And I love also all the inner circle. Like I feel like they all knew. They're all just sitting here like, so when, so when are you guys going to realize? Like are we, get, can we just get it over with? And I'm very excited to get to see how their relationship is going to change the dynamic a little bit in the inner circle. And I just can't wait. I can't wait. I also think it is hilarious that she was like, fine, I'll do, like, the mating thing, but I want the biggest mating bond party you can literally make. Like, I want it so extravagant. And Reese is like, you just saved my wife. I will literally spend all my money on on your mating party. And she's like, okay, let's go. And it was just so funny. I loved it. And with that, in one of, and I think it's in that same scene in that conversation, Nesta mentions that when she... The way she saved Feyre, partly, is that she changed Feyre's skeletal shape, basically, so that this problem wouldn't happen again if uh, Feyre and Reese have another child. And she says she also changed herself, and she, I think, might have also changed Elaine just because she was there. Um, so, and Cass is like, the, uh, children, meet you now? And she's like, not now, but like, if I, if we do, like, I'm not gonna... I won't die if we have a child and he has wings like you and I like mm, if we can get to a point in this world where Nesta and Cass have a child sign me up sign me up I literally can't wait it's gonna be so good so I think those are all my thoughts on A Court of Silver Flames long story short I loved it it's my like one of my new favorite books of all time it was so good I do wish we'd seen more of more because uh, we barely saw her in this book at all, but I feel like wherever she was off doing stuff will be revealed at a later point. Because she still is someone who does not have anywhere close to a happy ending. Like, Asriel has these two options that could offer him a happy ending. Cass has his, Reese has his, and like, even Amran has that one prince guy, like, Moore's just sitting here with nothing. So I hope that does get brought up later too. Um, I really love this book. I really loved it. And I told myself this was going to be a short review and I'm pretty sure it's like 30 minutes long. So I apologize for that. But I really love this book and I just had to just love rant about it because it's my new favorite. Okay, the outro of this video is being filmed on my phone because my camera died because I talked for way too long about this beautiful book. Anyway, I upload videos every Sunday, sometimes bonus ones on Wednesday like this one. I hope you enjoyed. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>